One of my favorite discoveries when looking into the history of the soda fountain was finding out about don't care syrup. Now don't care syrup has two purposes. The first was if you walked into a soda fountain in the 1800s and they asked you what you wanted and you said, don't know, don't care, whatever, this is what you got. It had a second purpose too, and that is if they didn't want a soft drink, something syrupy sweet, and they wanted something a little bit harder, they'd say, don't care, whatever. They would get this syrup, and this syrup is made with whiskey. Now, one of the things is when you go through the history of the soda fountain, this changed. This recipe we're making today is from 1877, but as you get closer to the 1920s, it kind of disappears as a alcoholic drink and turns into you know, more of a soda syrup drink. However, this alcoholic version, it clocks in at about one and a half percent ABV for an eight ounce glass. So it's not really, it's really a low alcohol drink, but it does have a surprisingly interesting and good flavor. You know, obviously it's made from whiskey. Uh, it's fairly dilute, but all of that comes through in this drink. So let me show you how to make it because it is a fantastic curiosity from the soda fountain. I'm Darcy O'Neill, this is Art of a Drink. I've been writing about cocktails since 2004, and in 2009 I wrote a book on the history of the soda fountain called Fix the Pumps. And when most of the soda fountain research I do is, you know, from 1850 until 1920, just before Prohibition. One thing they did sell at soda fountains was low alcohol drinks, and this is one of my favorites. So to make it, it's basically the original recipe is three ingredients. We're going to do four because sherry was so often used in these don't care syrups that I decided to include it and it gives it a little more depth of flavor. But basically it's whiskey, a little bit of sherry, uh, simple syrup, which is always three to two at the soda fountain. You may find if you use two to one for this uh, drink, it's going to be too sweet. Uh, one to one will work really well because it's going to be less sweet, but I always make three to two, so to stick to the original recipes, so that's what we're using today. And now the fourth element is a nutmeg essence. Now these are super simple to make, and this is the basis for all sodas. To make an essence, you basically need one ounce of your distilled essential oil, so your nutmeg distilled essential oil and you'll need one pint of alcohol. Now I use 80% ABV. If you can't find this, uh, often called Everclear, or you'll find vodkas that are in the 70% range, uh, you can always use vodka. Uh, the difference with vodka is it may come out a little cloudy, but it's gonna taste the same. So to make this, I'm not making a pint of it because it's that would be way too much. And we're gonna make 100 mils, so a simple small bottle, and that's enough essence to flavor 20 liters of syrup because we're only gonna use two and a half mils of this and 500 mils of syrup. So really simple to make. All you do is get yourself a beaker. Now I pour out my alcohol first and I'll show you why it's just easier to clean up, but we need basically 96 milliliters of this. So not basically three ounces. Uh, that will work. And then we need six mils of our nutmeg S or nutmeg essential oil. Now I use a glass syringe just because disposable syringes, once they hit the essential oil, it basically messes them up. And this is just an easy way to get it into the bottle. Uh, you can use a teaspoon if you want, they work fine. Or you can use disposable pipettes, they work fine. But for my purposes, I find working with this glass syringe just is accurate and easy to clean. So now one of the reasons why I pour the alcohol first is that you can basically clean your syringe. You do three rinses with that and that should be sufficient to clean the syringe. And then you just add the remainder of this. Now you could just add that to the bottle and shake, but uh, it's just easier for me to keep talking. Put that in. Now, when you're making the syrup, it's pretty simple. You're gonna need 150 mils of whiskey, but you can use any whiskey. You can use rum or you can use brandy. All were used back in the uh, 1800s. Then you're gonna need 300 mils of the simple syrup and 30 mils of your sherry. Sherry's optional, but it does add flavor. Now, one other thing you can do, you can add caramel coloring if you want. That will give this drink a darker color because you'll find when these early soda fountain drinks were made, they're often all quite pale almost a light yellow. So if you don't 
want that, you can add caramel coloring. It'll also give the a little more depth of flavor. Now, one of the things you can do is if, if you're starting with six mils of essential oil to make, you know, three ounces or a hundred mils of your essence, you can always change the proportion. So if you wanted, you could always add a little bit of mace, for example, um, add a few drops to it. It's not going to change the uh, recipe uh, a lot, but if you wanted to add five mils of nutmeg and one mil of mace or one mil of cinnamon oil, and then you were to work it into your essence, that would be fine. That's basically how you're going to create soda flavorings. But I will talk about that in a future video. For right now, we're going to start making our syrup. So this is a 150 mil measure. So we will get 150. Now at this point, you can Take a, we'll need two and a half mils of this essence. This is a three mil pipette. And this will need to be stirred. Now this will clear up eventually once we get the uh, simple syrup in there. Uh, these syrups are for the most part clear. They are just slightly hazy, but it is not a big deal. Then you can add your sherry. And what I usually do is I don't measure out the simple syrup. I just know my 500 ml bottle here. And so I will add this. And then I will take my simple syrup and simply add it to the bottle. Now this would be the point where you added caramel coloring, but I will show you how it turns out without the caramel coloring. So once this is made, you basically make sure your top is on because we're going to shake it to combine everything. Now these syrups will clear. It just takes a little bit of time for them to clear because we have air, treatment, and the oils will go into solution. Now to make the soda is quite simple. You just take an eight ounce mineral glass, almost everything was served in an eight ounce glass, and we're going to serve it solid, which means to, you pour your carbonated water first. You'll leave a little room at the top. Then you take your jigger. You measure out an ounce. Sometimes you do an ounce and a half, but if you were to, and generally it won't overflow. If you want more, I tend to find one and a quarter, one and a half ounces works. Uh, Modern tastes have changed a lot. So we tend to like things a little bit stronger flavored. That would be the don't care syrup soda. Now, I have found that this tastes a little bit flat. No, you get, definitely get the whiskey in it. Uh, it doesn't have any acidity in it to balance it out. So I found like literally a few drops of acid phosphate can cheer it up a little bit. And you can always add a dash of bitters. Uh, that will help with the color as well. And then just give it a stir. Now, obviously it might be better to put your bitters in first because they don't seem to sink, but. Now you can't think of this as a cocktail or a highball. This is actually a soda. And so it's relatively mild in flavor, but you definitely get the whiskey flavor in it. Uh, and you can modify the proportions of any of these that you want. So for example, you can do one part whiskey to one part one to one simple syrup. You're gonna get a stronger drink, but you're gonna end up in the two and a half percent ABV. So depending on what your purpose, if you just want low alcoholic drinks. This is a great one. Um, it does have that whiskey flavor. It does not have the bite of whiskey though. And if you're a bar and you want something more interesting for your patrons to try, this is a great one because it has an interesting story and it does taste like whiskey. So in a future video, I will talk more about making essences because they are the basis of all the sodas. So subscribe and you'll catch those in the future. And thanks for watching and I will talk to you next time.